Well, welcome to this series entitled Solid Foundations. This is talk 11, where we're going to look at God's plan to restore us relationally. In the last two sessions, we made the statement that to be healthy spiritually, as God intended, we needed to be healthy in all four of the relational areas that God created us for with him first, then with ourselves, with others, which is our session today, and uh, then lastly, with the earth that he put us on. You see, everything God creates, he creates for a unique purpose, and he designs it to function in a certain way. That's, that's true for us as well as human beings. When we operate outside of how God intended us, outside of these design guidelines, it has physical and psychological effects on us. This is true of all areas in life, but particularly the area that we're looking at today. God created us to function in a certain way relationally. We are created with this deep need to belong and to be part of something bigger than just ourselves. You see, life is meant to be and it's created to be shared with others. God never intended us to go through life alone. His intention has always been for us to experience life in close relationship with him and in healthy relationship with other people. Jesus summarized all of the commandments in the Bible into two when he said, love God and love others as you love yourself. You see, none of us can fulfill God's purpose for our life by ourselves. Life is actually all about relationships. The rest is just the details. If you don't believe me, ask someone on death's door about what's the most important thing to them. It's been said hundreds of times before, but nobody on their deathbed says, or I wish I'd made more money, or I wish I'd spent more time at work. Actually, it's a good question to ask, if you were given 48 hours to live, what would you do? I guarantee, guarantee it would involve touching base with the people that are most important to you and spending time with them. The ultimate success or failure of our life will not be gauged on how much money you've made or even the success of your career. You see, the ultimate lasting legacy that you will leave will be in the relationships that you have invested in others around you. Why? Because as I said at the start, God created us for a relationship. It's, it's wired into our DNA. It's, it's, it's actually part of God's DNA as well. God is part of an intimate relationship team that we call the Trinity. God, God is a God of relationship and intimacy. The Bible is a book about God's relationship with human beings. And right throughout the whole book of the Bible, the theme that runs through it is God's relationship with us. Jesus came to earth because God wanted to restore the broken relationship with his creation. If you look at the life of Jesus, it revolved around relationships as well. His, his core relationship was with his father God. He spent time with him alone. But then he had three close friends, then a small group of 12 and a larger group that knew him really well. And, would travel with him all around Israel. Then crowds of people that followed him. He, he not only modeled a life in relationship, but he said to his followers that the world would know they were his by their relationship with each other. John 3 and verse 35, your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. You see, our witness to the world is gauged by our relationship towards each other, towards other people. When Jesus instigated the church, the word he used is the Greek word ecclesia, 
it, it's actually not a religious term. Jesus, as he often did, he used a word that was common in his day. In this case, the word simply referred to a gathering or an assembly of people, a group of people who were called together for a specific purpose. That's what ecclesia means. The most common use of the word ecclesia in Jesus' time referred to people who were part of society but were called out by the Roman government and placed in what they called the Senate who were given the responsibility to govern and oversee all of Roman society. E ecclesia never referred to a place or a building. Actually, it never referred to an individual but it always referred to a group of people who were called out for a specific purpose. So whether we like it or not, Jesus called us to be part of a group of people who took responsibility for looking after those around him. You see, while our decision to follow Jesus is personal and individual, God never intended that our life could be lived in isolation from other people or other believers or followers of Jesus. He, he puts us in a group of people, a, a gathering of diverse people, and tasks these groups, these gatherings, these assemblies, with the purpose of loving and serving him, the king, and representing his kingdom on earth, wherever they went, whatever they did. And that's what he told us to do. God wants us to be connected to other people as his representatives. But the problem is for the last 60 years or so, there's been such a strong emphasis in our society on personal individuality, self-improvement, self-image, self-fulfillment, all focused on me as the individual. We've largely now become a society of loosely connected individuals. Scott Peck, psychologist and author in his book, The Different Drum, says individualism is the enemy of community. I agree with him, it's true. Added to that, the social media and other technology, technology that we have in our world today seems to make us more connected with each other Yet fewer of us have genuine friends than we had before. As a result, we have become disconnected from other people and lost our sense of belonging to a community. As I said at the start, God never intended and made us this way. Right from the very beginning, God said in Genesis 2 and 18, it's not good for man to be alone. We are made for a relationship with each other. We are created to be connected with other people. Psychologists call this a universal need to belong. And it's true for each one of us. So why is this sense of belonging so important? Well, when we aren't connected in meaningful relationships the way God intended, we suffer natural consequences whether we realize it or not. Here's the first that we suffer, a loss of perspective. When we live in isolation from others, we can easily lose perspective on life without realizing it. I've seen this in so many people. That's because there's no objective voice questioning our views or bringing balance to our life or to our thinking. Isolation makes us vulnerable to deception, especially in this day and age with all the technology and its ability to target things specifically to us. So it isolates us. Secondly, we become selfish. People who are disconnected from a diverse group of people tend to be more selfish and inwardly focused. You see, if the end, sum total of a person's life is defined by just their schedule and their agenda and their needs, and before long, the world starts to revolve around the themselves. Their world becomes smaller and smaller, and increasingly, they become more and more selfish. 
The third natural consequences, consequence of not being in a healthy community is actually poor health. Our health is affected. First of all, physically, studies have proven that time and time again, people who live with alone with very few relational connections are at greater risk of sickness and poor health and are actually proven to be three times more likely to die early than those with strong relational connections. Researchers have found that a person's ability to love and connect with others lays the foundation for both psychological and physical health. I remember the, we had a, a, an Irish doctor and psychologist um, in our church a few years ago, and he said that most of the mental health issues his patients faced were related to them being disconnected from other people, particularly other healthy people that were different from them. The breakdown of their family or the lack of meaningful relationships in their life meant that they had nobody to sit and talk to about issues that they were facing. Secondly, not belonging to a community results in poor health spiritually. You cannot grow spiritually without being around people. <laughs> it's interesting that none of the fruit of the Spirit can grow in isolation from other people. Think about it. It's very easy to be patient if you're simply around yourself or with people you like, having coffees, you know. It's real easy to be patient. But patience and kindness and gentleness and self-control only grow in the context of relationships with people that will test you in these areas. So it's important for us to be around people that are different than us. The fourth consequence of not being connected in a healthy uh, community of people is it disconnects us from God's purpose. Ephesians 2 verse 19 says this, Now you are no longer strangers to God and foreigners to heaven, but you are members of God's very own family, citizens of God's country, and you belong in God's household with every other Christian. God wants a family that he created you to be part of. The, the entire Bible is a story of God building a family who will love him and honor him and represent him on the earth and reign with him forever and ever. When we place our faith in Christ, God becomes our father, we become his children, other believers become our brothers and sisters, and the church becomes a spiritual home and family. Just like in a natural family, you don't get to choose your brothers and sisters. That's true, isn't it? So it's true in the church family. You know, one of the things that set the early church apart from every other community at that time was that people who obviously had nothing in common other than Jesus came together and got along in one community. People who were total opposites, slaves with their masters, conquering Romans with the nations they conquered. Women and children were worshipping with men in, at the same time in the same place. It was unheard of in its day. You, you see, our faith is meant to be lived out in the context of a larger, diverse, multicultural, mixed Christian community. Christianity cannot be reduced to just an individual experience. It involves taking up our rightful place in a community of believers who are committed to being part of God's biggest story on earth. This is how God designed us to function. It's the reason Jesus came to earth to restore our relationship with God, ourselves, and each other. And the next and the last session in this series, series, we will look at our relationship and our role with the earth we live on. I look forward to seeing you in the next session. God bless.